Chelsea, I have a problem. I have this cute little camera, but I want to take pictures of it where it looks big. But wait, watch this. When I get close to it and try to focus, it just hunts in and out. Why can't I take pictures of it? <laughs> you can take pictures, but they're not going to look like what you want because what you want is this, a macro photo where you can take pictures of tiny things up close and get a ton of detail. It's otherworldly, it's interesting, you get details and it's the perfect time of year to do it because you can take pictures of things like fall leaves. If you're a wildlife photographer taking photos of insects or birds, if you take pictures of little collectibles like stamps or toys, or even wedding photographers who need that close-up ring shot, we will show you how to get all of those at your budget. You know why? Because our sponsor is KEH. KEH is the world's largest supplier of used gear. That means they have fantastic gear at way below new prices. And you don't have any risks because everything comes with a 180 day warranty and a 14 day return period. If you just don't like it, you can send it back. And if you happen to have old gear, you can sell them that too or trade it in to get better stuff. You can also get your stuff fixed there, which I think is nice if you need repairs. If you want to check out KEH, go to this link and you can use this coupon code to get 5% off when you buy or this coupon code to get a 5% bonus when you sell. But before you buy anything, I'm going to show you how to get the best possible pictures using the gear you already have. First, go into manual mode. Pretty much all macro photography happens in manual mode. Now, when you're in manual mode, you want to focus at the closest possible distance. And then when you're focused at the minimum distance, just lean your body and the camera in and out until your subject is in focus. Now, if it's a zoom lens, you don't know where the minimum focusing distance might be. Some zoom lenses focus closest at the wide angle and some focused at the telephoto end. So I'm gonna try both of those and just see where I fill the frame the most with the subject. And the focusing distance on this is not good at either end. Tony, you can fix that and inexpensively too because you can get an extension tube and these are like 20 to $40. They're very affordable. They have no optics in them. They're just an empty little tube that you put between your lens and your camera. Extension tubes usually come in a set with multiple tubes. And this gets a little complicated. What I do is I start with the smallest extension, which is 10 millimeters on this one. And I'll put it on the camera and then I'll attach my lens. What the extension tube does is it moves the lens away from the camera and that allows you to focus closer. So again, I'm in manual focus and I have this focused at its minimum focusing distance manually. And then I'll just lean my body in until the subject comes into focus. Well, it, it literally is focusing now with me bumping up against it. For this little inexpensive thing, suddenly I could get so much closer. There are some tricks to extension tubes the minimum focusing is going to change based on the focal length of the lens. So when I am zoomed wide angle on this, I get so close that I have to bump up against it. But if I zoom in to 100 millimeters, now I can't get nearly as close, but I have more working distance. If you can't get close enough, add a bigger extension tube or even stack multiple extension tubes. There's another trick with extension tubes. They allow you to focus up close, but you give up being able to focus at a distance. So if suddenly I want to go from taking a picture of something close up to something far away, I can't do it. I have to take off the extension tube. That is kind of a pain. But in this situation, it's okay. If you want to be able to focus not only up close, but to infinity, you can get a macro lens. And they're more expensive than the extension tubes, but thankfully KEH has a lot of them and they're affordable because you can get them used. Just make sure it matches the mount of your camera. So find a lens for Nikon if you're using a Nikon camera. Some of the macro lenses even go as close as four to one. That's incredibly close, but the more you magnify, the more close you are, the more difficult it gets to focus. So. You have to be mindful of that. And let's talk about that metric for a little bit. You'll see magnification listed on macro lenses. True macro lenses have what's called a one-to-one -one magnification. And what that means is the size of your subject in real life is the same as projected onto the sensor of your camera. That is one-to-one. -one. If you have two-to-one magnification, that's even greater. That means projected onto the sensor, the subject is twice as big as it is in real life. That is extremely close. So look at that magnification number more than the minimum focusing distance when you're looking at macro lenses. 
Now we have two macro lenses here. This 90 millimeter Sony macro lens we just got in from KEH. And I have a 35 millimeter macro lens from Canon. Wider angle macro lenses are generally better for still subjects like this. But if you're thinking about taking pictures of moving subjects, especially insects, a more telephoto macro lens like 90 or 150 millimeters is gonna be more useful because it will give you more working distance. So for this, I'll use the Canon 35 and show you how close I can get. Once again, I'm in manual focus and I'm going to focus at the minimum distance. And then I'm going to push in with my body until I see things come into focus. There we are. One thing you're gonna notice when you first start taking macro photos is that the focal plane is very shallow. And what I mean by that is that only a sliver of your subject will be in focus. You can overcome that at first by using your aperture number, your f-stop, and make that number bigger. So if you're at f2.8, then it's gonna be a very tiny sliver. If you open it up to f16 or something like that, then you'll have more of your subject in focus. But because it's macro, it could still just be a sliver depending on your magnification. This is f2.8, f4, f5.6, f8, F11, F16, F22. But using a high f-stop number introduces another problem, and that is you're not getting much light. So pretty soon, if you have it in auto ISO, you're gonna notice that your camera's at like ISO 25,600, and your images are gonna be all noisy, and they're gonna look like garbage anyway. So then you need to figure out some way to add light to it, right? I like to give hacks, and you can always use a household flashlight and backlight something. Let me take a picture and I'll show you. I've got my light. I put it behind my subject. Look at the difference between the backlighting. It makes it brighter, the color's brighter. When you front light it, it's like the light bounces off. Look at the difference. And if you're using a flashlight, you might notice that you get a black bar in your photo and that's because your shutter speed is too fast and you can lower it to like 1 1 25th to get rid of that. Whoa, look at all the details. I wanna try it with a feather too. One cool thing about this feather, it's not actually blue. It doesn't have the pigment blue in it. It's the structure of the feather that's absorbing every color but blue. So if I backlight it, it turns brown. It's a little bird knowledge for you. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. Birds are liars. So I'm trying to align the focal plane with my flat subject. And what I mean by that is if I'm shooting down on my subject, you can see I just get a small piece of the subject in focus. But if I'm making my camera and the subject parallel, then I'm keeping as much as possible in the focal plane. Another tip is that when I'm taking pictures, you can see how I have to lean in and out to get my subject in the focal plane. Sometimes you can be shaky and you can get some motion blur or lean a little bit too much. So I like to take a few pictures at a time. Instead of putting it in single shot mode, put it on high or medium so you can get a few shots and ensure that at least one of them is in focus. The flashlight is very useful, but you often need a whole lot of light. And momentary flashes, strobes, are really good at that. This is a macro ring flash. It is extremely effective and it's easy to use. This is ETTL, so the exposure is gonna be completely automatically and because it's on the front of the lens, wherever I point it, the subject is automatically illuminated. But the pictures are so boring. <laughs> Let me show you an example. It's flat. And the background just becomes black because the light is so close to the subject that the light fall off, disappears, and you get no background to it. I have a better way to light your macro subjects that also costs less. This flash happens to have a little wireless trigger to it. I like that because then you can move around the light source and get more variation to your lighting and more texture on your subject. Exactly. Let's show. I'll put it on excess so we can show that we can still get a nice front lit photo. So you can see I can still get the front lighting. Let's try some side lighting and see if we get some more texture there. Oh yeah. It's an undulating leaf landscape. Let's try backlit. Ooh. I think this is one of the most fun things about macro photography is the fact that everything is on such a small scale. You can simulate completely different lighting by just moving a little flash around it. Now let me try to take a picture of my little camera guy here. Wait, I like doing it. Just to show that you can do it by yourself, just one-handed. I feel so sad. And I'm gonna have top lighting here. 
Whoa, that looks so professional. Isn't that so much better than just straight on lighting? What a great way to learn lighting. Holding the light close created a relatively larger light source that created smoother shadow fall off. Hold it far away, I got sharper, harsher shadows. By moving the light around, I could create the look of on-camera flash or more mysterious off-camera flash. That makes me want to do a photo shoot with a little car. Do we have a little car? We do! I, I'm excited. Can you do this one? Mm. Even our toy cars are dirty. <laughs> well, you discover that everything is dirty with macro photography. You need like a can of compressed air. I have that, but it makes our dog angry. Here, I'll hold this. That looks so cool. Can you can you back up a little bit so we can get... This is like a professional car shoot, how they have the huge light over the car. Well, exactly. That's the cool thing. You can simulate having massive lights. Now we're just having fun. This isn't even the video anymore. Tony, we have to get back to teaching. Let me talk about camera settings. I'm in full manual mode. I have the ISO set to ISO 100. That's going to give me the best image quality. And because I have plenty of light, I don't have to worry about it. My f-stop is high. I'm at the highest f-stop, f22. And my shutter speed is going to be fast enough to cancel out any camera shake. So I'm at 35 millimeters. I set the shutter speed to 1 100th. You need to be two or three times the reciprocal rule, two or three times the focal length to cancel out camera shake. Because when you get really close, all those little movements are magnified by a huge amount. All right, next we're going to do a more advanced technique called focus stacking, but we have reviewed a lot of gear from the extension tubes to flashes. So if you need any of this stuff, you can get it at KEH used and they have a 14 day return policy where if for any reason you don't like it, you can return it. They also have a warranty period. Everything I've gotten from them used has been excellent. So you don't have to worry about it. They inspect everything and they have a huge selection. So go to KEH and check it out. We also have a 5% off coupon code for anything that you buy. And if you want to sell your old gear before you buy something new, you can get a 5% bonus towards the gear that you sell. So thanks, KEH. Chelsea, why don't you tell them about focus stacking, which can give them unlimited depth of field, sharp from front to back, and it overcomes diffraction, which wrecks your sharpness at high F-stops. Not diffraction. Well, <laughs> listen, when, you first, when you're taking these pictures, you're going to realize that a lot of the times there's just a sliver of your subject in focus, especially when you have subjects with more depth, like a flower. If you do focus stacking, you take a bunch of different pictures at different levels, and then you combine them in post-processing to get a subject that's completely in focus front to back. I'll do some focus stacking on my little guy here. So to start, I'm going to focus on the closest part of the subject, manually focus. And then I'm going to snap a picture, and then I'm going to move in a little closer, snap another picture, move in a little closer, another picture, a little closer, another picture. And I'm going to keep doing this until I have focused past the farthest part of the subject. After you load your pictures into Lightroom, click the first picture and shift click the last picture to select the entire range. Right click the images, select edit in, and then select Open as Layers in Photoshop. Now in the menus, choose Select and then All Layers. On the Edit menu, select Auto Align Layers. Leave the projection on Auto and select OK. Now select Edit Auto Blend Layers. Select Stack Images and both checkboxes and then click OK. There it is, your stacked image with sharpness from front to back, but Photoshop's not perfect. And so you see little defects like this and in the background when it stitched it incorrectly. And that's why it helps to have some knowledge about how to use layers to fix those sorts of artifacts. And I don't want to do a whole Photoshop lesson here because you have to understand layers and blending, but we have an entire book on Photoshop. So check out the Photoshop book and the book Stunning Digital Photography to learn more about macro and focus stacking and all of that stuff. The benefit of focus stacking is really improved sharpness because with focus stacking, you could use a moderate f-stop like f8 or f11 instead of a high f-stop like f16 or f22. Those high f-stops introduce diffraction, which is the bending of light around your camera's aperture, and that ruins sharpness. You'll get the sharpest pictures at around f8 or so, and you can see just how much of a difference those different apertures make. All right, so that's not it. There's so much more to learn about macro photography, but that's an introduction, and you can 
go out and start taking photos of leaves or whatever it is you find that you want photos of. We covered the gear, we covered the lighting, we covered the settings. So go out and have fun and make a photo project. This is a great one for a rainy day when you can't go outside or a cold day when you just don't wanna go outside. And again, I wanna take time to thank our sponsor KEH because you can get any of this stuff used for an incredible price and it's no risk because they have a 14 day return period if you don't like it. So go to KEH and look for flashes and macro lenses and whatever other gear you might need and you can get 5% off using our coupon code here or get a 5% bonus when you sell your gear. So thanks so much for watching and thanks KEH. I don't envy you. This is going to be a tough one to edit. Yeah, there's a lot of work that has to be done on this.